today, October 17th, 2020. I'm going to read to you The Godmother of Elf Twinkle and Her New Friends. 13 chapters, written by myself, Marion. Originally written in 1999, autumn. Chapter 1. Elf Twinkle Falls from a Sunflower One day the wizard decided to visit the garden. It was already near October and today the sun was shining. He felt this was an opportunity to make use of. The colours in the garden were different now from those in the summer. Many purple blue of autumn asters and a couple of sunflowers showing their dark hearts with yellow sunny petals. The pumpkin plants that crept over the earth with their long stones wore orange fruits, some round like a ball and other irregular, oval or flattened balls on top and bottom. Not one was the same, just like us. The wizard looked at the cobwebs and shivered every now and then when he saw a big fat garden spider in its web. He had to pay attention. Some were hanging right above the path, and he was tall. In the early morning the webs glistened with dew pearls. You could see them properly. Have you ever seen such a beautiful embroidery? Elf Twinkle didn't appear yet, though the wizard had called her a few times. He always stooped when passing under a web, and when he came to a high sunflower and looked for signs of Elf Twinkle, he felt a tap on his head. He looked up and there he saw the little elf in the heart of the sunflower. Good morning, Twinkle, the wizard said. There you are. Good morning, Twinkle replied with her mouth full and she reached out, offering a sunflower seed to him. I'm sitting in the middle of my breakfast. Yes, I can see that, said the wizard as he took the snack. Does it taste good? The little elf nodded and took a big bite. The wizard peeled the sunflower seed and stuffed it in his mouth. The little elf couldn't help laughing when she saw the tiny bite disappear in his mouth. She choked and lost her balance. She tumbled down with a squeal, but fortunately the wizard held his hand underneath her and caught her. There she sat, coughing with a bright green face, while she looked at the astonished wizard. He had never experienced such a thing. Where do you want me to drop you? He asked shyly. Back in my breakfast, please, said Twinkle, and she pointed upwards. The wizard brought his hand gently to the sunflower and the little elf got hold of it. Thank you for catching me, she said. I'd better not laugh so hard up here. And she put on a serious expression while she continued her breakfast. Now it was the wizard who burst out laughing, but he soon stopped when the little elf looked at him with sternness. I'm sorry, Elf Twinkle, he said, and she gave him a handful of sunflower seeds. It was quiet for a while, while they were eating. Oh, I'm done, said the little elf, and she climbed down the sunflower stem. Fancy a little walk? I will tell you about nature, she said, and she stepped on his shoulder. Oh, yes, please, said the wizard. I must get used to it that you don't have wings. For a moment I expected to see you flying around in the garden. Twinkle made an impatient jump on his shoulder and said, I have told you of the twelves and the tenors. Well then, uh, uh, yeah, yes, said the wizard, apologizing, and he understood that they should change the subject. Hold tight, he said. We are going to walk now. And there they went, first slightly uneasy, but soon the wizard strolled over the garden path with ease, with Twinkle sitting next to his ear. Also, the gymnastics under the cobwebs went well, and when they walked underneath them, Twinkle called them, Good morning, Frida, or Good morning, Harriet, and she told the wizard of her visits to the lady's garden spider. The patience with which they can weave, she said. Every year they make a winter coat for me with pockets in it. Clever, isn't it? The wizard smiled and asked, what is it they use to make that winter jacket? 
Well, they're wet briefing threats, of course, since they've always enough supply, said Twinkle. And then I often come over to fit the winter coat and we drink cups of tea. Very cozy. The wizard silently shivered inside and hoped that he wasn't going to be invited. Quickly he walked on a little further to the red berries of honeysuckle, while Elf Twinkle waved at the fat grey pigeon, which was sitting on a branch right above her, calling, Whoop whoop! Whoop whoop! Chapter 2 Elf Twinkle and Tobias become friends. On an autumn night, just after sunset, Tobias walked down the spiral stairs of the tower to the garden. By the way, Tobias is the cat of the wizard. The wind whistled around the tower and dark clouds floated by like ragged garments blown into the air, visible against the dying light of day on the horizon. The leaves were rustling and the branches of willows arched forward on the edge of the garden. Many cobwebs had come, become loose and hung on the branches like rags. Fortunately, the ladies' garden spider are very patient and never grow weary of weaving. Elf Twinkle was happy, singing and swaying on the tough stems of the honeysuckle. She had just dined with a squirrel in Beach's Fortress pub and was a little drunk with the elderberry wine. Meanwhile, Tobias darted through the garden and chased the leaves, or was it the other way around? Every now and then a branch fell down with a thud on the leaves. Tobias flew under the bushes, terrified, and watched with round black eyes as the strange, at the strange thing. Was it a beast? Careful, he approached the thing and sniffed it. He smelled leaves and earth. He tapped against it with his paw. The branch moved a little but made no sound. Tobias lay down flat on the ground and swished his tail. Then he attacked, landed on top of the branch and clutched his paws around it. Ouch! Ouch! How painful! A sharp thorn stuck in the pads of his left long front leg and Tobias jumped away from it with a yowl under a bush. He licked his paw but the pain didn't go away. The thorn had entered it deeply. Startled, he remained sitting on his bottom with a raised paw and crept under the bushes as far away as possible from that dangerous beast. And so it came to pass that Twinkle, observing Tobias from her position in the honeysuckle, saw him limping and occasionally sitting still, licking his paw. Elf Twinkle and Tobias, by the way, know each other from previous adventures. She noticed that Tobias was in pain and called out to him. Hello, Tobias, what's the matter with your paw? Tobias looked up and saw the little elf with her silver hair. Can you help me? I'm bitten by a strange beast that fell from the sky. Twinkle climbed down and walked over to him. With both her hands, she grabbed his leg and looked at him with her earnest green eyes. Will you please withdraw your nails? Then I will be able to see what the trouble is, she said, she asked. Okay, said Tobias, I'll do my best. And Twinkle examined his paw pads. Yes, I can see what happened, she said, a thorn. I'll try to pull it out. You should lie down and stretch out your paw. No sooner said than done, Twinkle took hold of the thorn, raised herself and pulled and pulled until the thorn slowly began to detach itself. Meow! came Tobias voice but he stayed put just a little bit more called Twinkle huffing and puffing and all of a sudden the thorn shot out so that the little elf fell backwards on the ground they both laughed and rolled through the leaves that night Twinkle slept under a warm blanket the fur of Tobias chest chapter 3 elf Twinkle asks for help Elf Twinkle tapped against the window of the tower room. There were soft taps. These were soft taps because an elephant is not that large. Therefore, Tobias was the only one who heard the taps. He walked up to his girlfriend and called out, Hi Twinkle, how nice to see you. 
The wizard, who was eating a sandwich in the kitchen, heard meow, meow, from the living room. Nothing strange going on, really, so he took another bite and a sip of his tea. A few moments later, Tobias came into the kitchen, watched his boss and said, Come quick, there's a visitor. The wizard didn't understood this, as it was cat language, but he understood that something was going on and followed Tobias to the room. Soft taps were audible against the window. Tobias stood against the wall below the window and looked up at his boss. Ha, who have, who do we have here? Hi, Twinkle, said the wizard, and he saw the green little face with the silver hair. He opened the small elf door in the window that he had specially made for her, and the little elf stepped in. Cold morning, she said, shivering. Please put me in front of the fire, I'm freezing. The wizard allowed her to step on his hand and transported her to the fire. Twinkle climbed up on one of the mountain crystals and warmed herself a little while to the glow and warmth of the fire. The wizard prepared a thimble of hot chocolate and brought it to Twinkle. You've made a long trip in the cold. I expect something special must be the reason for your visit, he said, as he sat down on a fleece. Twinkle nodded and took a sip of her hot chocolate. She didn't look as merry as usual. Would you, would you be willing to help me with a problem? My godmother, who lives in the hill behind the horse paddock, is suffering from the cold. I've tried to help her, but she won't listen to me. She's haughty and strict. She might want to talk with you and maybe possibly thaw a bit. Would you accompany me and visit her? I want to, replied the wizard. If I can help, I'd be pleased. Oh, would you really? asked Twinkle, and she looked at him in happy surprise. A few green tears fell from her eyes. She was so grateful. The wizard looked at her with kindness and understood that she loved her godmother very much. And Tobias, which, which all this time lay at his feet, walked over to Twinkle and licked away her tears while he stood up against the crystal. Twinkle giggled and she felt his tongue like a grate on her cheek and stroked his nose. Would you join us, Tobias? Please, she asked, and Tobias meowed. Just step on my back and we start our journey. The wizard couldn't understand it, but he saw how Twinkle climbed down and stepped on Tobias' back, hiding in the warm fur. Shall we go today? she asked, and her green eyes looked happy. Tobias will also join us. Oh, that's a great idea, he said, and stood up to get his warm jacket and boots. I'll take some food with us. He called from the kitchen, and moments later he closed his backpack, opened the door and let Tobias with Twinkle walk out before him, down the spiral stairs. The wind blew around the ears of the wizard while he left his tower. Chapter 4. The Three Friends Go on a Trip While Twinkle firmly clung to the fur of Tobias, the wizard followed them with large steps down the spiral staircase. The eastern wind whistled around the tower, and when the wizard opened the outer door, the cold cut off his breath. He wrapped his scarf around his nose and mouth and bent down toward his two little friends. Please walk in front. I would like to step firmly so that I can keep warm. All right, said Twinkle, who grabbed an ear of Tobias and spoke into it through the horse paddock and then all along behind the hill. Ouch! Tobias cringed, which meant, don't shout so loud in my ear. Sorry, said Twinkle, and she patted him gently on its head. The companions started their adventure. Around them the garden was barren. Brown and grey, the winter had stripped away colour and form. Only the blue of the sky among the clouds offered a little colour to the day. Tobias walked up to the fence and into the horse paddock. Black Moon, the horse of the wizard, was in his stable. 
If he had known that his boss went on a trip, he would have been happy to join. The hikers left the flat terrain and started to climb the hill. Their breath came out in clouds, two small and one large. I always want to travel in this way, said Twinkle, with sparkling eyes, looking around her. The wizard smiled about his lively friends and enjoyed our climbing the prospect of an adventure. He knew Ralph Twinkle now a little, now a little while, and she had told him a lot about nature, but of her family he didn't know much. Only that there were twelves with wings, and that the tenors lived with the gnomes. Elf Twinkle was grumpy, and he began to ask her about her family, and he'd rather avoided the subject. And yet he asked her when they took a rest on top of the hill. May I ask if your grandmother is an elf? Twinkle let herself slide off Tobias and climbed on his knee with a serious face. She took a crumb of bread and chewed on it thoughtfully. I don't really know, she answered after a pause. I have never seen her clear enough. She lives in an ice cave and never leaves the place. Everything is white and frozen. She talks only about how dirty everything is outside her house and that there is no one who wants to listen to her. That is why she has stopped talking about herself. She complains about the cold while she freezes on her sheet of ice. Tobias, who had been listening, turned his head towards her and said, I guess she must be an ice cream, and no elf who loves the sun like you. I don't know, Twinkle said, looking sad. I hope we can help her to warm up again. The wizard looked at her kindly and gave her a slice of apple. If we are rested, we are going to visit her. It shouldn't be that far from here, I think, he asked. Elf Twinkle shook her silver hair back and forth and looked at him with grateful eyes. So far the first part of The Godmother of Elf Twinkle.